Seeing that uh, we are in the Thanksgiving week, uh, we recently shared the stage with uh, Bill Gates Sr. and currently presents uh, keynotes and workshops for Special Olympics, Children's Hospital, BSHS, and U.S. military. As a result of his passion for gratitude, he has presented over 350 speeches and workshops <coughs> in the past three, past three years. He's a member of Seattle Rotary. Number four. Over 750 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message, and he's now considered a re leading authority on how living a life of gratitude can enhance your, enhance and improve your life. Uh, no further ado, please. Uh, Thank you, Nick. Thank you. By show of hands, how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? Thank you, John. And the, I think it's interesting. I get to speak to commencement speeches for high schools where the average age is about 18, and then I do nursing homes, which is about uh, 80, 90, 95. Nursing homes, everybody raises their hands, but what's really shocking is that half the kids in high school raise their hands. And of course, I don't ask them what the personal significant loss those that they had. But I just want to extremely briefly tell you about a personal loss that got me on this journey. It was September 29th, 1998. It was a Tuesday. I woke up about 6.30 and I looked over in bed and couldn't find my wife. I thought, I wonder where Dana is. Just then, Connor, my four-year-old, comes over and says, where's mommy? I said, I don't know. Let's go find her. So we walk out, go out to the bedroom, down the hallway. My 14-year-old, Kyle, comes out. Same question, same answer. We don't know where she is. So we finally get down to the end of the hallway. We look downstairs and down by the washer and dryer. Here's Dana, face down. Didn't look good. We go running down there. I turn her over. I said to Kyle, call the, call the medics, call the fire department, call everybody. Connor started crying. What's wrong with mommy? You could tell something wasn't right. So for those of you that have gone through something like this, one of the things that you notice is time loses all measure. And it seemed like 20 minutes, and yet it was really only two or three minutes that this place was full of firemen, police, medics, and they were working on her. And I was just distraught. I couldn't control Connor. He kept crying, what's wrong with mommy? She wasn't breathing. Kyle was the same thing. So about then, the little uh, fire person comes over to me and she says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half. We still don't have any heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? And I remember thinking in shock, at least this little brain still kind of works a teeny bit. And I thought, 90 minutes, no heartbeat. I looked at the fire person, I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead, and she was 38 years old. The boys, as I mentioned, were four and 14. But what it really got me going on is a path of deciding, I'm gonna have to look at how to frame my life. Now, I don't have to look around very much to know the average ages of the groups I speak to, as I say, from 18 to 95. I speak a lot to soldiers, because 22 soldiers commit suicide every single day. And it just breaks my heart. So I go down to Fort Lewis, and. I went to Camp Pendleton, I went to McCord, a lot of the places up in Washington, I speak to these soldiers about a gratitude and a gratitude journal and having an attitude of gratitude. But it does depend on how you look at something. So I'd like you to all stand up if you'd be so kind. No exercises, just something brief. It's not calisthenics, don't worry. Take your right arm, put it up, and start turning in a clockwise manner. Now we're all old enough to know which direction the clock is. You'd be surprised in the high schools, they have no idea what clockwise is. No idea. They have these digital things. They go, what is clockwise? Anyway, so keep it going clockwise. Just look at it up there like the face of a clock. Now start bringing it down. Bring it down to your forehead, your eyes, your chin, your chest, and your waist. What direction is it going now? Counterclock. Counterclock. Who said that? Gary? Me. John. Good job. Counterclockwise. Guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John looks damn good for 83. God, they beat your eggs. Oh my gosh. You can sit down. Thank you, Oscar, for still doing that. See, always, that's always, that's all. 
So, you know, I have glasses of water here, or there's tea, and I could say, let's look at this half full or half empty and that type of thing, but I prefer this because, number one, I don't have, always have water when I'm out speaking to big groups, but it depends on how you look at it. All it is is do you view it from up above or from below? Clockwise, counterclockwise, it never changes. But that's my way of showing people. It depends on how you look at something. So now, you see those little three by five cards? I discovered gratitude is the way that really changed my life. I'd like you to get one of your three by five cards. You need a partner and you need a pen. So John and Dwayne can be partner, Oscar and John, Jay and Chiz, Jeez, Bud and Gary, maybe Terry and John, or Terry and Rich, and John and Nick. Who needs a pen? Pens. Look at you guys, you're all so on top of things. I'm so, it's so exciting. Everybody got, okay, everybody ready? Thank you, Rich, for, you want to share? Okay, so you, Nick, you're with John. Okay, so on your card, everybody should have a card. Upper left-hand corner, I want you to write two words. You are, upper left-hand corner. Thank you, Gary. Y-O-U-A-R-E, you are. And after you've done that, in the upper right-hand corner, write your partner's name. And hopefully you all know each other. <laughs> By the way, people always ask me, how do you remember everybody's names? The big reason I remember names is because I tell people, if I can remember names, <laughs> did you get UR and then you got the name? Oscar, are you on top of it? Yeah. You got John, of course you're on. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Watch this to you and R. Okay, bottom right hand side, lower sign your name. Where? Lower right hand corner, sign your name. O S C A R for Oscar. He asked me how I pronounce Brooke. I said, well, you I said, said you're from far away, and you're only from Seattle. That's nothing. Well, you're from Bosnia. Gosh, I mean I'm nothing compared to Bosnia. So here's what I want you to do. Now, there's no talking during this. This is just, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and I want you to write how you see that person. You are happy. You are energetic. You are funny. However you see that person, write as many words as you can about your partner in about 60 seconds. Go. <laughs> I paid twenty dollars to John to say that. That was good, John. <laughs> Hello. About 15 seconds. Okay, and stop. Now I'm going to give you one minute to read to your partner, about 30 seconds each. Read to your partner everything you wrote about them. Take turns, go. Okay, and stop. Now, exchange cards so you have the card that was written about you. And even though you just heard, I can hear all you guys saying things to each other and ladies, even though you just heard what was said, 
just take a look at it as you read because sometimes when you look at something visually it can impact you even more so from hearing it for your ears and my question is when you read what somebody wrote about you and you look at that card by show of hands how many people here might hold on to that card just about everybody it goes from anywhere from half to every single person in the room raises their hand so the question is is why why is it that we allow other people to see us in such a positive light and yet we I was listening to John out of the corner of my, what did you say like you don't have it right or something that was funny yeah <laughs> well, I try to keep it PG rated but nonetheless but but the thing is John John is a perfect example of the way most people are so don't feel out by yourself the, the thing is is that most people look at themselves in a much harsher light and to me that's what when you see how somebody else sees you that's what embracing gratitude does for you I talk about five things today embracing gratitude it takes as long as it takes never give up clean out the, your brain make room for gratitude get a gratitude journal and share gratitude those are the five things and I'll be done at 129.59 <laughs> I never go late but the thing that's interesting about this is I can't do it at all groups I did it at high schools and the kid shows me a card and it says I see you as an idiot and I just went no 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 these are nice things you're supposed to be nice but the whole idea is that I don't understand why we're so hard on ourselves and when you write in a gratitude journal which is the main thing I sell these to these soldiers and I encourage people to write in these you take five minutes every day and I'll get to that in a second to talk about the things you're grateful for what is the definition of gratitude gratitude is helping you focus on what you have versus what you don't have it's so amazing when we look at people we know businesses everything we focus on all the things that they have and we don't they have a bigger house bigger car more money all of this kind of thing that's a crazy cat chasing your tail type of thing so it is so important it's also very important as I said I meant it seriously from about 17 18 years old to 95 I'm 66 years old I don't really give a darn I'm gonna do this to 76 86 96 age means nothing to me Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started KFC. Mary Kay Ash, 59. Ray Kroc, 58. J.C. Penney, 56. These are all people that became hugely successful at starting at a very late age. I left Nor uh, Norseman a long time ago, as you heard Nick say. But I was working for Lowe's. And I decided one day, I've been talking about this for 45 years. Since I was like 19, I wanted to be a speaker. Now I get to speak to thousands and thousands of people or groups of 15 or 20. It makes no difference to me. I told Nick, we were talking about when I met him. I talked to these soldiers. There'll be big, huge theaters, 2,000 soldiers at a time. And I get to speak to them. And then I went to this nursing home and they forgot to promote the Brooker. That gratitude guy was coming. And there was just one guy. So I just said, just sit down right here. Just the two of us. We just talked together for an hour. So it doesn't really matter. But I knew that I was going to have to follow my dream sometime, and it didn't matter how old I was. So finally, about four years ago is when I started. And I was working at Lowe's, as I mentioned at the time, and Connor had struggled mightily with Dana's death. But so did Kyle, but Connor was only four. But I decided it was finally time to put my money where my mouth is. Connor was 17 at the time. He's now 21, tw almost 20. He's actually 22, and he goes to San Diego State. But I came home and it's about two in the afternoon and he looks at me and he goes, what are you doing home? I was managing Lowe's. And I go, uh, I quit. You quit Lowe's? And I said, yeah. So you quit being a store manager at Lowe's? And I said, yeah. And he's sitting on the couch and he just looks up at me and he goes, well, that's just super dad. I have a question for you. I go, what's that, Connor? What are we going to do for money? <laughs> What are we going to do for food? And I said, just trust me, it'll work out. But it doesn't matter how long it takes because it takes as long as it takes. You can't ever give up. Connor, as I mentioned, struggled mightily. This was horrific losing Dana. My dad had committed suicide. My mom died. Had all these other people pass away when I was younger. And I thought, I can go get a bottle of Jack Daniels and live under a bridge somewhere. Or I can turn around and make this into something positive and help people. Because we all know if you want to help yourself, Help other people. What is that said about rotary? Service above self. So Connor said, Dad, I want to play baseball. So I had to set the good example of the guy that never quit. But he had the worst time in class. He was held back in kindergarten, held back in first grade. And then with baseball, we go and we do coach pitch and we do T ball. And they have the little T 
and Connor is on the tee, and he can't. He's hitting. He's swinging the bat way up here. Here's the tee. Here's the ball. See, I, I'm just kind of going. What is the difficulty here? And, and he's looking at me swinging, and, and I just. And finally, he takes it. He swings really low, and he hits the tee, and the ball falls off the tee. And he goes, "Dad, I got a hit." <laughs> I just went. That's not how it's done. <laughs> yeah, but it's not how it's done. But he kept trying. First grade, second grade, third grade. Fourth, he kept playing baseball every single year. Never even played. It's always in the dugout. He was there for practices, but never played. Well, we finally get to this May 31st. He's about 10, 11 years old, and he's playing on this team, and I think they're out of players. And I notice that there's nobody left, and there's bottom of the seventh inning, there's a guy in second and third, there's two out, and there's nobody else to come up to bat. So the coach yells down, is Brooke down there? And the coach yells, and here comes Connor. Connor's swinging the bat like he's the biggest hitter of all time, like he's Babe Ruth, and whipping it over his head and stuff. And as he walks by, he looks up in the stands. I'm up there with a bunch of parents, and he goes, Dad, I'm up! And I just went, kids don't talk to your parents in the stands. My Lord. So anyway, he gets up. Ball one, strike one, ball two, strike three. Full count. The next pitch comes in, and he just rips it down the third baseline goes just inside the bag into left field. The guy from third comes in to score. The guy from second rounds third and comes in to home. The ball comes there. The catcher catches it. The guy that had come from third, they all crash together and the ball pops out. And the guy lands on home plate and they win the game eight to seven because they were down seven to six. Connor's standing way out there in second base. I'm in the stands way far away. And he goes, Dad, I got a hit. And he's standing up there on second. We got home that night. I said, Connor, it was never about baseball. It was about the fact that you never quit. And he never gave up. He had a lot of other things happen to him in his life, but he ended up being the top student at Bothell High School, which is in the north part of Seattle. And maybe more importantly to him, on the baseball team, he was the leadoff hitter. That was when he was 18. So you just, you just can't give up. And leadoff hitter, bat at first. And I tell this to people because I mentioned this to Nick when I said I've got a few journals and a couple of books and I sell a lot of them as I mentioned the army different people if they want a gratitude journal or whatever but my biggest passion is about sharing the message about embracing your life with gratitude don't ever give up it takes as long as it takes it's just how long it takes sometimes it takes a long time it took me to 62 to become a speaker that's just the way it works I have a much better message. I think I'm a better speaker. I have more stories. I have a lot of things that make it a lot more meaningful than if I'd been 22 or 19 when I first wanted to be a speaker. But you've also got to make room for gratitude and you've got to get rid of junk. And people come up and they talk to me at the book table after I'm doing these conventions and things. And they don't want to say anything in front of a group or if we ask questions, but they sure will come over and tell me some of these stories when it's just the two of us. And there's other people maybe milling around the table. And I tell them, but you've got to get rid of stuff. I do, I do a lot of exercise. We're going to do one more exercise with those cards, so hold on to them. But I tell them you can't keep driving over junk in your life, picking it up, putting it in front of you, and driving over it again. One of the good examples is people will talk to me and they'll say, oh, I'm really upset with my, my ex-husband. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. When did you get divorced? 1993. <laughs> and I just, gosh, get over it. You've got to move on. So one of the big things that I tell people, I parked over here by the, kind of on where there's a bigger parking lot. And if you look at the car I'm renting, there's the windshields like this. It's about two feet deep. It's about four or five feet wide. And then here's the rear view mirror. See, I suggest that's how you look at your life. Mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. It's probably a 200 to one ratio, that windshield versus that rear view mirror. Now, you do have to pay attention to it. I saw blue lights this morning when I was going down the freeway. I was glad it wasn't me. But maybe glance occasionally, learn something, but mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. So this is the main thing I want to talk about. It's something called a gratitude journal. As I said, I, I publish these and I, I have a bunch of them and I have other books and things, but I tell people, I don't care if you get a spiral notebook. There's something about writing something. When you look at that card, and somebody says, I listened to John and Nick, and I could kind of hear that some of the words that were being said. I thought, man, what a nice compliment from somebody. When you see that written down on a piece of paper, it plants it better in your brain. They have studies now that show this, laptops, it's fine, but there's nothing like writing to plant it in here. So with all these laptops tab, tops, and these little gadgets, 
it still makes a big difference to write. This takes five minutes a day to write in. So what happened to me, this is a buddy of mine says, what, four or five years after Dana passed away, you're just still not the same. You're just, you're, you're too depressed, you're still not, you're not dealing with things well and so forth. You should get a gratitude journal. And I said, what's a gratitude journal? It's a little book you write in every day and you talk about everything you're grateful for, your blessings, your abundance, the things you're appreciative of and so forth, thankful for. Okay, so I got it and I noticed a huge difference. I started framing everything with what I was grateful for instead of, gosh, I lost my wife and my dad had died when I was younger and my mom and so on. There's a little saying on the top of my journal right here, very small. It says, if you talk about it, it's like a dream. Or excuse me, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. You can go back, I can look on days I've written, I wrote on the plane this morning when I was flying down here. And you can see and go back and cross-reference and see names and there's a little thing called a daily number. So here's what I want you to pay attention to. Take that 3x5 card if you have and turn it over if you would. So I'm going to have you write something on the back. No, you're on the one that was written about you. You should have the one that was written about you. On my part. Yep, whatever they said about you so it has your name in the upper right hand corner. That's your card. Hopefully it's some pretty cool stuff. So we'll go and we'll start on that in a second. I want to show you how this journal works. You put the day and the date, Tuesday 11-22. The daily number we're going to come back to. There's a couple of lines that just says current events, special occasions, so you don't have to have a diary. Just maybe I put, I'm flying to California this morning to do a talk. And I'm going to San Diego later today. This is everything you're grateful for. Then there's a little line down at the bottom that says the highlight of your day. That's strictly the best thing that happened to you yesterday. And then lastly, and I don't spend a lot of this time on this in 30 minute talks, but on the right hand side is your gratitude intentions. And that's where you write what you're going to be grateful for before it's even happened. And the example I always give people, I used to write in here, I'm grateful to be speaking to hundreds and hundreds of people. And then I was speaking to 100 people. Then I said thousands of people. Then it was 1,000 people. Then it was 10,000. And I spoke to 10,000. And now I write, I'm grateful to be speaking to millions and millions of people about gratitude. It hasn't even happened yet, but I have over 100,000 views on YouTube. So that's one place I'm getting closer. So, but here's what I want you to do. The daily number. This is the exercise for you folks. The daily number, and believe me, this is not something you share with anybody. You had your partners, this is just you. Nick and Nick, John and John, Rich and Rich and so forth, just you. This is how you feel this very second and I'm going to repeat, you're not sharing this with anybody. Ten is the best day of your life, one is the worst day of your life. And you can do halves, you can say seven and a half or six and a half or eight and a half or whatever. But on the back, in the upper left hand corner, I want you to put what you think your number is right now this very moment and circle it and just kind of think the state you're in physically mentally emotionally financially spiritually whatever it might be and whatever that number is upper left hand corner and put a circle around it okay and then I want you to put three numbers one two three because you're gonna write three things so just number one two three on the card on the left And for those of you that are speedy, if you could only pick one thing you were grateful for, put that at number one. What is the number one thing in your life you're the most grateful for? Write that down at number one. Number two. If you can only pick two things, the second thing you're most grateful for, what would you be that? That would be at number two. And number three, I just mentioned the highlight of your day. You may need to think about this for a second. What was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? What was the biggest highlight of your day yesterday? It might take a moment. Okay, looks like everybody's just about done. So here's what I want you to do. I just mentioned about reading 
and hearing somebody say something, I just want you to silently reread those three things you wrote. The number one thing you're grateful for, the number two, and I want you to pay attention to your mindset as you're writing them, as you're reading them. And the highlight of your day from yesterday. And now, I want you to see if your number changed at all after reading those things. Whatever your number is, could be the same, might be different. Put that number in the upper right hand corner and put a circle around that. All right, everybody done? Looks like it. How many people's numbers stayed exactly the same? Okay, how many people's number went up? One, two, three, four. That is a 60 second example of what writing in a gratitude journal will do for you. When you look at the number one thing you're grateful for, you look at the number two thing you're grateful for, and then you look at your highlight of your day, if you don't feel better about your life, then you might have a little tougher day going than you think. But I've been in classes where every single person's number goes up on something like that. And again, that's a very short version of writing in this, and this takes five minutes a day to write in. That's how powerful a gratitude journal is. It makes such a big difference. There was a, uh, my mother died when I was young. She was manic depressive. And I think I got some of that crap from her. And I know that, uh, I struggled with depression and I just refused to take pills because my wife had died, I didn't say this, but she had died of a prescription pill overdose, Vicodin and Oxycontin, you've heard a lot about that. Never really got control of it. So I managed to get some of that from my mom and she would call me when I was 15 and 16 and 17 and she'd have sleeping pills and she'd shake them and she'd put them by the phone, it wasn't a cell phone back then, and she'd shake them and say, you either come over and see me right now or I'm gonna take all these pills and be dead. And I remember thinking, boy, that may be one of the biggest, most manipulative things a parent could do. But what did I do? I'd go over and sit by her and just talk to her. I didn't know what to say. I'm just a kid. But later on in life, I noticed I kind of got that from her. And I tell people, I don't know who gets more out of these gratitude talks, my groups, my people, or me. Because every time I talk about this, it reminds me of how fortunate I am to be alive and to be raised two great children. They're now 32 and 22 and have battled back from a lot of things and not gone some other routes that are deadly and destructive. So I woke up one day, I was at two. So you now know that number system right there. So I thought, well, Mr. Gratitude guy, you better practice what you preach. So I grabbed my journal, I went down to Starbucks and I wrote in it and that bumped me up to about a four. So I felt a little bit better. Focus on my health, my sons, my life. I got a roof over my head, I got a shower, I got a hot, I got a warm bed, to, I got food in the refrigerator. So a lot of things when you really focus on it. But then I had to give a talk that day. It was a big chamber of commerce, about 250 people. And I went and I did the talk. And after it was over, these people come up and they talk to me and they buy the books and stuff. It's really neat. This gal goes, can I give you a hug? I said, sure. She gives me a big hug and she goes, uh, you just changed my life. And I went, what, uh, what happened? So she goes into this big story. She says, I'm going to get a couple of gratitude journals for my children. But your story about this, the comment you made about that, the, the, the thing that you mentioned here, you changed my life. And she's crying. These tears are going down her cheeks and she gives me this big hug. So I leave and I'm packing up things and I get out to the car. And I sit in the car and I realize now I'm a nine. Maybe even a nine and a half. I started the day out as a two. Didn't have a drink. Didn't do some prescription medication. Didn't snort some white powder or smoke on something that's legal up in Washington now. <sighs> All these other choices we have. The problem is many of them are going to hurt you and a lot of them kill you. And something like this can do something in such a healthy way. So I'm going to talk about a couple more things. I'm going to wrap up. I highly recommend a gratitude journal. You can buy mine. You can get it online. You get it from Amazon or get a spiral. But I'll tell you, it'll change your life. It really does. It can impact you in such a great way. I also think it's important to know that the most important relationship you'll ever have in your entire life is the one you have with you. So if I take my little wallet here and I take out a $20 bill. It's got Andrew Jackson on it. And I hold up that bill and I say to everybody here, how many people would want me just to give this bill to you? Just give it to you by show of hands. How many would want this $20 bill? Hopefully it's everybody. If I do this, now it's crunched up. How many people want it? Same thing. Thank you. If I put it on the ground and stomp on it, kind of crush it. Yeah, thank you, Terry. And I smooth it back out. Who still wants it? I know Terry does. So does everybody else. Right. 
And finally, if I look at Andrew Jackson and I say to him, listen, Andrew Jackson, you're a piece of crap. You're worthless. You have no value on this earth. You know what he, he does? He looks at me and he goes, well, listen, Mr. Speaker Man, you can say whatever you want about me, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. So my question is, why do you let somebody crush you, crumple you, step on you, tell you you don't deserve to be on this earth, that you're worthless, and in the worst case possible, devalue you to 15 bucks or to 10 or to five or worst of all, zero, when Andrew Jackson has no trouble knowing he's still worth 20 bucks. Now I'll tell you, I try to do that to as many on these little shorter talks that I do, as many groups as I can, but when I do workshops, the one that resonates with the most are women. And I've had men too, but women told me, I don't know how I ever got past that X person or this person or that whatever person. If you understand the value of the relationship you have with yourself, you'll have a lot of success in this world. It's the most important relationship you'll ever have. Last thing I wanna talk about, sharing gratitude. How many people have a smartphone here? Okay, take out your smartphones. I heard, I heard a couple of them ringing. To me, one of the best things you can do is share gratitude, and that is, if you wanna make some impact on somebody, help them get what they want in life. Service above self. If you want to help other people, you. help yourself. Bless you. Help, your, help other people if you want to help yourself. Here's what I want you to do. I call this the four T's. You'll probably text. Text, telephone, tweet, or tell. Those are the four T's. And I'm going to give you one minute. Somebody in your life, text them and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. Go. And if you don't have a smartphone or it's not with you, just write a note to somebody you're going to tell them that later today. 60 seconds, go. Oscar, what's your phone number? I'm gonna text you. <laughs> he looks at me. I don't have a phone. I so just, have, here, just here, let me give, no, hold on, let me give you another card. No, 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 but don't, you listen. No, but don't write on the card, I want you to save the card. Here, write on another card. Oh. This is who you're gonna tell later. I, have an I don't want you to write on the card that you have the stuff, because I want you to hang on to those cards. About 20 seconds. Send? Yep, and please send it. You should see what happens in the high schools. I go into gyms, says no cell phones allowed. Every child has one. And so I just, go, I just do half these things, the three by five cards, we just do them on the phone. I just give up. There's, there's no point in, in fighting an uphill battle. So they won't write? Nope. But they'll do all the, they'll put it on their notepad and things like that too. So let me tell you why I enjoy doing this. And Oscar's right, in some of the groups, a lot of the, the groups I'll be there kind of in that 30 to 60 year old range is probably the most common age group that I speak to and I do a lot of talks. I do, gosh, 150 a year. So I can meet a lot of people. But I really get a kick out of this because people will notice what people text back to them and say. And so I was in this uh, auditorium as a performing arts. Who was, talk, was it, who was talking about the Beatles? Me. John was. And, and it was one of the, but it was like a big auditorium, but it was like an opera house kind of thing. And I could hear this lady, she was calling, most people text, but she was calling, she was right over about where Nick was. And I could hear her talking and she goes, honey, I just want to let, I'm assuming it's her husband. She goes, I, I, I just, uh, I want to tell you how grateful I am for you and I just really love you and I really appreciate you. And I don't know, some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what's, 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 what's your take? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's so funny because as I say, most people text people and so they'll come up afterwards and they'll show me, look at this, here's the text and they show me their text and it says, um, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> and then there was one recently where it said, um, uh, I'm grateful for you too, what do you want? <laughs> So it just reminds me, and it's my way of reminding people that if you want to really have the value in something, share it. It's like, again, back to John's thing with the Beatles and anytime and his mom and then she got to see it and, and all these things. You want to share it with people. Have you seen a good movie? Have you seen a good play? Have you seen a good event or what have you? So something about sharing that makes it so powerful. So I was never somebody who smoked dope. I never did coke. I don't even smoke or drink. Yeah, it just it just doesn't something that interests me and I feel very fortunate. But I always was a daredevil. And I did I learned how to fly and had an airplane and 
went bungee jumping and all those crazy things. I don't really like heights, but I just didn't want something to be able to defeat me. So I decide with the fraternity brothers in college, we're going to go skydiving. So I sign up 10 of us. And so we're all signed up. And I notice on Monday or Tuesday, I get a call. A couple of them kind of drop out. It's for Saturday. And then on Wednesday, a couple more called. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Are you okay? I have a sore throat. I don't think I can make it. I went, whatever. So anyway, so I figured there's a few of us left. So I march into this Issaquah, which where it happens to be where I live now. And I walk up to the counter. He goes, can I help you? I said, I have a 10 o'clock appointment for Brooke. And he goes, yeah, Brooke, skydiving. And he looks at me and he looks over my shoulders. There's nobody there. And he goes, where's all your friends? And I went, uh, I don't have any. Nobody came. I was the only guy. So I went up and skydived and I got the little picture. I'm all scared, you know, when they take it from the plane and like, I'll think I'm going to die and things. It was just a static thing. But it reminded me of why sharing gratitude and sharing your life is so important. There's nobody to share it with. I have this picture, but there's nobody to talk about it afterwards. It was just one of those sad type things. So I encourage you to share it as much as you can. By the way, um, one last little thing. I send out a video every Monday morning at, one, at uh, 4 in the morning. It's a one-minute video. If you're interested, you can pass that around if you be so kind, Nick. If you're interested, you can sign up for it and I'll send it to you. It's 60 seconds long. It's just another subject on gratitude. There's all sorts of things. Yesterday was giving thanks for Thanksgiving. So this is the month when we have Thanksgiving. And uh, I try to encourage people to maybe thanks and be appreciative and be grateful. 12 months out of the year and not just one month out of the year. How yes, John. Does God fit into this, you think? When I speak to churches prominently, I do a lot of church speeches. But so I have to kind of make it non denominational and sort of because uh, I've had people come up and not be happy with me when I, I learned that, especially with Rotary. The Rotary I belong to, I've spoken before, has 500 people. So you can imagine. Really? Yeah, you can imagine what they. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of opinions there. So. Well, God, I have to, not just a specific, specific God, but just God in general. Well, it's, to me, it's one of the things I talk about a lot. Is not, it's not just one thing. It's like I think people that get depressed, for instance, they think if they just take a pill, that'll solve everything. And my maintain with all these people, especially these soldiers, John, with all those suicides, is a gratitude journal and the attitude of gratitude is just one tool in a toolkit. But it's a bunch of things. And if it's, if it's God, if it's water, if it's a gratitude journal, it's, it's exercise, it's eating the right food, getting your sleep. All those things. So I try to get. I try to tell people. I don't. I don't expect this to be perfect for everybody. But they, at least it can. Hey, they. You know, they focus on a higher being. They sure do. They sure do. Yeah. That seems to be important. Yeah, and I met a few AA people that are successful but haven't necessarily believed in God, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. So I will leave you with this. After having these people come up and talk to me, and trying to explain, I'm just on a mission to help people and tell them what it did for me. I tell a few stories. Again, I do workshops with all sorts of more exercises. But the whole point I want to get across is that embracing gratitude can change your life. It can transform your life. And in many cases, and including the one you're looking at right here at this podium, I think it can save your life because it sure saved mine. I do not think I would be here today without my belief, without my gratitude, and without knowing that if you focus on what you have versus what you don't have, you'll have a lot more success in this life. Thanks a lot. Thank yes. Yes, Terry. Oh, John. I just wanted to make a statement. My wife did 365 days of grateful. Oh, yeah. And she had to take a picture every day of...